Apple TV is hitting us with another sci-fi thriller, Constellation, and uh, <laughs> yeah, the weird psychological aspects of this are what I like in my sci-fi thrillers. Please and thank you. We're going to get into everything in these first three episodes, small things you may have missed, and of course some wild, weird theories of what we actually think is happening. Pull out your iPad and click that Apple TV Plus app because subtle product placement is what we like to do here. So Constellation kicks off with Joe Erickson, one of the European astronauts aboard the International Space Station, with a handful of others following their daily routine of experiments and spacewalks. It's quickly established that Joe is from Sweden, seen by the flag on her uniform, and also a mother talking to her daughter Alice as we're introduced to the other astronauts and just the, like, interior of the space station where much of episodes 1 and 2 take place. The big hiccup that literally starts the strange chain reaction of events at the core of this series is the ominous NASA physics experiment being conducted by Paul, the ISS's United States astronaut. After three episodes, we're, we're still in the dark about its true purpose, but so far we know it's dealing with magnetic fields in zero-g and somehow functions at a quantum level. Henry, the NASA man on the ground, is very particular about this experiment. Part of me thinks that he went through the same fiasco as Joe and the others are about to. He's also very persistent on making sure that the experimental data gets back to Earth, so I have a feeling that this is going to be the Chekhov's gun of this series because future Joe looks to have stolen this same experiment. Anyway, the experiment is fired up for no more than six seconds, and uh, this is where all hell breaks loose. Something seemingly collided with the ISS right after the experiment started up, causing fires, power and structural damage, and unfortunately the crew having to 127 hours Paul's arm. Take my hand! Ah! Resulting in his death due to cardiac arrest. Now this is where the weird psychological thriller aspects of this series start to breadcrumb us viewers because Joe discovers the source of the collision via the exterior of the ISS and according to her and what we see as viewers, a damn USSR cosmonaut had been mangled up in the ship's electrical wiring and structure. This instantly gave me flashbacks to uh, Cloverfield Paradox, where in that movie they are searching for a god particle due to the Earth's energy crisis and end up in a parallel universe where similar events happen like a mysterious crew member mangled and fused with parts of the ship. Getting back to Constellation, as everything like this goes, her camera malfunctions and other astronauts weren't there to witness any of this. So it's really a question of, is Joe a reliable narrator, or did the device cause something strange to happen? Personally, I'm leaning more to the latter than the former. So what the f*** is happening? Well, Joe volunteers to stay aboard the ISS, and the others head back to safety, back to Earth, weird things begin happening more frequently. There was the NASA experiment, something on the quantum physics level that we later learn was being used to discover a new form of matter, visually observed to be like splitting an atom or maybe separating it into two different atoms. I mean, I'm no geologist, so I'm not 100% sure on the science here. But Henry does mention a double quantum signal along with uh, observer's effect a quantum mechanics theory that something can be two different things at the same time and only becomes one or the other when observed by someone else. A prime example of this is uh, Schrodinger's cat, where a cat and dangerous chemicals are put in a box together and the cat is both alive and dead at the same time, only revealing its true outcome when the box is opened. So if that's what a constellation is leaning into, that means that Joe, similarly to the Cloverfield Paradox, is suffering from time loss because she is theoretically in two places at the same time. Now, I originally thought it might be some sort of time dilation mumbo-jumbo where time for her is moving faster and slower and she has no control over it. But I think the parallel universe theory takes the cake because of the overwhelming clues teased to us viewers. The biggest clue is the several times, mirrors, reflections, the shadows double up, showing two of the same person. 
One of the first times this happens is when Joe is watching the others leave the ISS and continues many times, including Joe finding the other cabin in the future timeline that, you know, we'll, we'll get into later. On the ship, Joe has uh, hallucinations of Paul, even hearing his voice, of which I'm saying is in a parallel timeline that Paul survived, but stayed back and helped Joe release the clamps on the escape module. I mean, she looks out the window and sees someone floating, a shadowy figure, so yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that that is Paul. Heck, it, it could be Joe saving herself, but I, I don't want to go down that path right now. Once Joe is back on Earth, she has memory problems, thinking their family car was red instead of blue, and hearing an alarm aboard the ISS when the audio logs prove otherwise. She completely forgets that she was having an affair with the European space head, like th this dude right here. I mean, she acts weird when he tries to caress her, and her husband and daughter are surprised when she is chipper than ever when she's reunited with them. So that's something that's not 100% apparent, but definitely was happening. This is why Joe is given the red and yellow pills. They are lithium carbonite, which are typically used to treat manic depressive disorder, aka bipolar disorder. If Joe is caught in this weird parallel universe going back and forth, it could easily be diagnosed as bipolar episodes. I also stumbled across something called the quantum double slit experiment, where patterns are eerily similar to the results that Henry receives. But in our world, this method would be used to, uh, in telescopes to see very far away planets in the sharpest of quality. Now, I'm probably butchering this, but it reminded me of a guilty pleasure movie, 2003's Paycheck. Ben Affleck, Uma Thurman, Aaron Eckhart, Paul Giamatti, a little bit sci-fi, I, I love it. And uh, minor spoilers, there is a telescope that can essentially see around the curvature of the moon, back to Earth, but shows them the future. So part of me thinks that this quantum theory may be at play here as well, because on the ship... Joe hallucinates the wardrobe that we later find Alice hiding in. So is this a two-part thing where Joe is ripped into a parallel universe and somehow has Madam Web-like clairvoyance? Honestly, I, I think that's the case and that's my leading theory, but let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments because this is a hell of a trippy one. Henry, Irina, and Bud are three others that I think know and kind of understand what Joe may be suffering from. All three were on previous space missions, trying to conduct similar experiments, and resulted in two dead astronauts. All three of them seem to be dealing with unclear details from their past as well. For example, Bud got the name of his childhood dog incorrect in his memoir, much like Joe in the color of their car. There is obviously a dark, unspoken past between the three. They all take the same red and yellow pills, and Henry hallucinates that Irina is the same mummified USSR cosmonaut that Joe claims that she saw going outside of the space station. So again, a parallel universe situation where Irina was the one who died in the ISS. She does feel a bit squirrely when Joe's drawing of what she saw is presented in the, the hearings. Side note, I thought the introduction of Bud was so jarring. I, I thought he and Henry were actually the same person at first. I, I was very confused, but yeah, they are identical twins. This surprisingly takes real-life inspiration from Scott Kelly, who was the commander of the ISS and was also a consultant on this series. Surprisingly enough, he does have an identical brother who was also an astronaut, so uh, the, the, the more you know. Stress and anger could be a trigger factor to this as well in this parallel universe because I think that it was mentioned by Irina and also kind of explains why Bud just straight up throws that dude off of the cruise liner. Lastly, the present timeline with Joe and Alice is maybe the most intriguing part of these first three episodes. Joe is clearly on the run, potentially she snapped and killed her husband Magnus because Alice does ask where he's at. Once they get to the cabin, there is this painting on the wall that is the famous The Wounded Angel painting, painted by uh, Hugo Simberg, and the national painting of Finland. Simberg never actually said what the painting symbolized, but many have theorized that it encompasses pain, melancholy, and confusion, of which Joe is suffering from. Joe can also be seen as the angel in the painting, falling from the heavens, space in her case, and is wounded because of her mental state of confusion. 
The interesting thing is the opposite cabin that Joe wanders into has an eerily similar painting, but this time it looks like a devil or a demon in place of the angel. I'm assuming this alludes to the inverse, the parallel universe that Joe is trapped in. Part of me was going even deeper with this because Joe is from Sweden and their flag is blue with this yellow cross while she has a Finnish painting and Finland borders Sweden and their flag has a similar cross design, but with different colors, potentially being another way to show that Joe is trapped in two different places at the same time. (laughs) Finally, Alice seemingly has Joe's clairvoyance as well, witnessed when she plays hide and seek. I can only assume she got it as a side effect of skin to skin contact, with Joe after her rescue in the desert. Again, we're we're making stuff up at this point, but I think she's been having visions too and has seen what Joe has done or will do. That's why she's kind of scared in the cabin. Heck, her entire journey might be an allegory for Alice in Wonderland. Uh, She already has the rabbit and Joe is the rabbit hole and her name is Alice. It's interesting that the scared Alice in the wardrobe is wearing a similar fur hat that Joe is wearing as well. Does one of the Joes perish? I don't know. Your your guess is as good as mine at this point. So far, I'm intrigued by what Constellation is setting up. I'm, I'm definitely a fan of psychological thrillers, and this has given me the right amount of threads to pull on. The uneasy confusion of the plot kind of adds to what I'm assuming these characters are feeling. However, the whole Bud and Henry identical twins thing confused the heck out of me at first. I I didn't understand how he was with Irina and on the boat at the same time. Numi or Naomi Rapaz has been wonderful so far. The accent has been a bit heavy here or there, but she's making up for it in the emotional distress of it all. The performance is great. I'm really hoping that this has enough juice to get us through all eight episodes because I think we may be on the right track with some of our theories. My biggest bugaboo is episode two spent a little bit more time than I would have liked, still up in space trying to figure things out. Let's crack this weird mystery right open and try to piece this weird puzzle together. That is the first three episodes of Constellation. What are your thoughts and theories after these first three episodes? Did I miss anything big? Please let me know anything and everything in the comments. Also, please be sure to subscribe to J-Buck Studios here as we'll be doing weekly breakdowns. I took a couple months off uh, from this long form content, so I'm trying to get back into the groove of everything. And if you haven't, please check out all of my other social media accounts, including my new Retro Rewind channel in the description. It really helps out everything and allows me to keep making these videos because I am a one-man team. You're the bestest. And you know what? We'll we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.